Okay, so you started your candida diet and now you're not feeling particularly well and perhaps you have some fever-like symptoms or perhaps you have some headaches, perhaps you're in the famous or infamous, depending on how you see it, candida die-off. And now you're looking around in the, on the internet trying to find a solution to that problem. Now in this video here I will explain to you the two single most important parameters when it comes to dealing with a candida die-off. This is Nicola Zanetti, I'm a senior college nutrition lecturer, I'm a seven times health best-selling author and also a nutritional therapist. Now, let's begin. So, you're experiencing the symptoms of a candida die-off. So you feel feverish, you don't feel well, and you started to question, should I not just stop with the candida diet? Should I not, not just stop with the antimicrobial I'm taking? Well, that's at the end your choice. Obviously, you need to be the one in charge of your health, deciding whether something is good for you or it isn't. But as a general rule, and speaking in general terms, if you wanted to reduce the chances of a candida die-off, or improve the chances of a candida die-off, you need to understand how the die-off actually is working. Okay? So let me explain this to you with plenty of detail right now. Okay? Let's begin with the definition. So what is the candida die-off? Well, essentially, a die-off of any kind of microorganism happens like this. You do something like a diet or taking some antifungal, some antimicrobials in general, which is going to start to kill the candida colonies in your body. As a result of that, when the candida colonies, they start to die, they release toxins into your system, okay? These toxins here, they might give you the die-off, but there is a hero inside of your body called your liver which could actually protect you from experiencing the die-off. As a general rule, every time a toxin comes into your body, your liver tries its best to detoxify the toxin and make it easy for you to excrete it from your body when you go to the toilet. So you can remove it and, and, and push it out of the body. Okay? So remember, there are toxins coming from the dying candida, and then you have your liver being able to detoxify these toxins. Why are you experiencing symptoms then? Well, because when the amount of toxins overtakes the capacity of your liver of detoxifying, that's when you experience the die-off, okay? The die-off is nothing but essentially your liver telling you, I can't detoxify these toxins any longer. They are too many for me to deal with. Therefore, you're experiencing the symptoms. So at this stage, you have three things that you can do. Number one, well, perhaps if you are killing candida colonies, perhaps you're doing it too fast. And there is no need to be extreme because what you need to understand in a real candida program is that it's probably going to last around six months, okay? So there is no need to be fast. There is no such thing as they getting rid of candida in a week or, or a month. It doesn't work like that in most cases, unless you're extremely lucky. But would you really bet your health on luck? I don't think so, right? So we go back to stage one. Let's slow down the way we deal with the candida colonies so the amount of dying of the candida colonies will go down and therefore the amount of toxins will go down. Step two, well, your liver can actually function better the better you take care of it. So if you feed your liver with foods like cruciferous vegetables uh, or garlic, cruciferous are like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, beans, uh, you could go with garlic, you could go with kale, okay? So these kind of food, eggs if you like them, all of these kind of foods will support the liver, the capacity of the liver to detoxify the toxins. So we are reducing the toxin and upping up the capacity of your liver of detoxification. And then the first step, remember that once your liver has detoxified something, something you need to push it out from the body. That's the process of excretion. And where do we excrete toxins for? from? Sweating, urination, which is number one, and defecation, which is number two when you go to the toilet. So we can improve sweating, we can improve urination, we can improve 
uh, defecation, right? So would like something like a sauna work? Well, of course, <laughs> of course it would. So like it would help you to push out the toxins in a better way. It would be very much ideal, right? How about drinking more water to improve the flow of the toxins well, through you, both the urine and the feces? And that also would work. Would eat food like cruciferous vegetables and beans, which are, which are high in fiber, help me, or help you in this case? Absolutely so. Do you see the point? So, once you do understand the challenge, there are plenty of things that you can do to improve the situation. Which leads me to what I'm about to say right now. Now, if you want to learn more about Candida, I have a case study webinar in the video description. In that case study webinar, I go through like a like the case of a person and I start to give you like ideas on what I would do in that case with a step-by-step -step approach. Diet, supplementation, reduction of stress, everything that you need to understand. So I will go through like a case and I will teach you exactly what needs to be done in that specific scenario. So if you are interested, click the link to access the free webinar in the video description. Now I'm gonna close the video here. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get the notification and share the video on your social media. And this is Nicola Zanetti signing off and I shall see you in the next video.